Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we shall take a look at the time value of money and look at investment opportunities making use of net present value calculations. Investment of capital requires decisions. A business investing in equipment, machinery or buildings will want to know the potential. This includes what sort of return is required, which means what rate of return will be required. Managers will need to see advantages for the company before making an investment. To be able to do this, it is important that we have some idea of the value of money. Well, a dollar is a dollar, isn't it? But is it really that simple? A dollar today may not be worth a dollar by the end of the year. If I invest a hundred dollars at a rate of six percent, then at the end of the year I have a hundred and six dollars. However, suppose I keep a hundred dollars in my pocket for the year, and the inflation rate is five percent over the year. Then, at the end of the year, the real value of the money in my pocket is only around ninety-five dollars. Let us assume a business is owed money. If the amount is a hundred dollars and the money is paid immediately, then the business gets a hundred dollars back. Suppose the inflation rate is five percent and the money is collected at the end of the year. Then the business only gets back around ninety-five dollars at today's values. So a business will need to look at future revenues and costs and will try and measure them in terms of what the value is at present. Time value of money assumes the money may be worth less in the future. If a manufacturer wants to invest in a car plant, then they work out the costs and estimate revenue. They then need to determine how much the revenue is worth in future years. If the plant has a life of 10 years, they will want to know the value of total revenue at present value. The calculations we are going to use are quite straightforward. If we have an interest rate of 5%, that means that at the end of the year, an amount equal to 5% of the original amount is paid or added as interest. If I start with $400, then after a year I have 400 multiplied by 1.05, which is equal to 420. So my investment after a year is worth $420. Now let us do the calculation the other way around. At the end of the year I have $550, and the interest rate was 10%. How much do I have at the start of the year? In this case I start with the final amount and divide. So 550 divided by 1.10 gives 500. The amount at the start of the year was $500. Most of our calculations will be concerned with investment decisions, looking at return over a number of years. So how do we carry out calculations over a number of years? Assuming that the rate of return remains the same, then the procedure is simple enough. We have $600 and we want to know the return after two years at 7%. We multiply 600 by 1.07, then take this result and multiply again by 1.07 for the second year. To simplify here, we multiply 600 by 1.07 to the power of 2. So we have a return of $686.94 over two years. Again, we need to be able to carry out the reverse operation. If we now have $720 and the rate of interest has been 20% over the two years, then how much did we start off with two years ago? We divide the 720 by 1.20 to the power of 2. This gives us an answer of 500. So we started with $500 two years ago. You are probably already aware that we have a simple formula here. If we let R equal the rate of interest, N equal the number of years, P equals present day value, and F equals future value, then P is equal to F divided by 1 plus R to the power of N. 
Accountants will make use of the idea of present value factor. So the present value is determined by taking the value and multiplying by the present value factor, or PVF. The PVF is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus R to the power of N. The table shows how this would be applied to a figure of $200 over a number of years at a rate of 12%. You can see that the present day value is getting lower the further into the future we consider. The net present value that accountants are interested in will be the sum of the present day values of all cash flows, that is, inflows less outflows. Once this net present value is known, then the information to take a decision is available. If the net present value is equal to or greater than zero, then the investment can be made. Why? Because the return on the original capital is equal to or greater than that amount. If the net present value is less than zero, then the investment is not advised, since the return will not cover the initial outlay of capital. Let us work through an example to show this. Tastes unusual are deciding whether to invest in an automated cheese making and packaging machine that will produce crunchy peanut butter cheese. They have an initial purchase price of $110,000 and the estimates are that the machine will save $32,000 each year and maintenance costs will be 1200 $1, each year. The present value factor is based on a required rate of 7%. So at the start the investment is $110,000 with a PVF of 1 since no time has passed. At the end of the first year cash inflows at 32000 and outflows at 1200 giving a cash flow of $30,800. Applying the present value factor of 0 0.935, multiply 30800 by 0 0.935, and the total is $28,000, and five cents at present day value. Using the same principle for the second year, we have the same cash flow, but multi must, must multiply this by 0 0.873, which gives a figure of $26,901.91 for the second year. The third year will give a present day value of $25,141.97. In the fourth year the cash flow is increased since the machine will be sold with a salvage value of $12,000. The present day value of cash flow for the fourth year is then $32,651.92. This gives us a cumulative value of $3,480.85. Since this figure is greater than zero, then there would be a return on the investment at 7% over the four years of estimated life of the machinery. Instead of calculating this on a year-by-year -year basis, the accountant could have used tables. The purchase price of 110000 is entered this is a cash outflow. The 30,800 is multiplied by a factor for four years at a return of 7% obtained from tables, giving a figure of $104,325.76. The salvage value of $12,000 is multiplied by 0 0.763 for the four years to give a value of $9,154.74. This gives a return of $3,480.50. Note there is a discrepancy of a few cents compared to the previous calculation due to the use of tables. If the business considers an alternative, such as using a cheaper machine, then incremental analysis can be applied. The proposed alternative is for a machine costing $105,000, with a residual value of $6,000, and producing a cash flow for each of the four years of $32,000. Alternative A 
The machine costing $110,000 produced a return of $3,480.50 on the original investment above the value of the investment. Alternative B, using the slightly cheaper machine, produces a return of $7,967.77. We could have shown this using incremental analysis. The difference in purchase price is $5,000 and with a present value factor of 1, the present value is obviously $5,000. The result from savings less maintenance for the two machines is a cash flow difference of 1200 per year over 4 years, having a present value of $4,064.64. The residual value is 6000 less giving a present value after four years of $4,577.37. The result is that the return for alternative B shows a gain of $4,487.27 compared to alternative A. This ends our podcast on net present value, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.